Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Okay, we're here at the Jamesoni, Jamesoni cage, uh, the Jameson mambas, the nominate species, not the subspecies. And we're gonna slide closed, if we can, the trap box door. Um, and this way, we can uh, uh, spot clean the cage uh, without uh, uh, them coming out to visit. This is the problem with trap boxes is substrate gets in the door and it doesn't like the clothes. Uh, <laughs> it was funny, I don't know if you could see it from the camera, but one of them started to get curious and poked its nose out and I, uh, I hit it very gently with the uh, with the pair of forceps and it went uh, and pulled back in and I slid the door closed. Uh, but certainly uh, trap boxes for mambas uh, makes spot cleaning and servicing cages uh, a lot more practical and safe. Uh, fortunately the Jameson mambas uh, love their trap boxes uh, and very very often uh, are in there and uh, at least part of the way and other part up on the branch and if I you know open the cage door a lot of times they'll just scoot back in there uh, which makes it a very practical useful tool for uh, for keeping them uh, it's certainly less stressful when they're behind locked doors in their cage. You don't have to remove them. You don't have to worry about uh, getting them into a container without getting bit. Uh, you certainly uh, save time because all that activity does indeed take time to, uh, to remove them. Uh, to chase them around the room if they don't go quietly, which is very seldom. Uh, so I've instituted using some trap boxes uh, just to facilitate that because uh, with my back it's just no fun crawling under uh, things after uh, escape the lapids. Problem is when you feed them they poop and uh, the nice thing about this substrate is it makes it easy as you've seen to, uh, to pick up and uh, uh, remove it and put it in the trash. Now that I'm done uh, I can scoot open the door and it has a latch if necessary if I want to remove the box from the cage for a total overhaul. And this way I can safely store them uh, uh, on a shelf uh, or you know someplace where they're not going to be a bother. Although this is probably annoying them. Oop, there's a note. Hello. Hello. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Now of course there's always the possibility when you open the door they come out like a rocket out of a launch silo but as you can see they're just sort of curious what I'm doing and it's Saturday and they know uh, I provide some tasty treats for them so now that the the spot cleaning is done and, oh and it also allows me to remove the glass safely uh, and clean them because as you see they you know they are lapids and they are you know messy uh, messy uh, roommates and stuff so it allows me to remove the glass and clean it with Windex so you can actually see what's in the cage 
So the next thing I'll do is I'll uh, I'll add some water to the water bowl and uh, uh, and then move on to some others. And yes, I could have left the trap box closed and filled the water dish, but uh, that's a minor detail and, and not a not a, a big problem. And to do a little basic uh, cage maintenance on the elegant pit vipers, who actually don't look so elegant right now with various stuck sheds and stuff. So we're going to put them in the bucket and let them uh, soak while we uh, maintain their cage. And since they're very seldom come out of their cage. They're going to be interesting and fun. I don't want to go in the bath. Come on. There we go. Those are some big venom glands. Yes, and they have very big fangs to, to go with them. Hi. Yeah, you're milky looking, so you can certainly use the uh, aquatic adventure. Now, come on, get your head down there. This is why it's nice to use uh, dark uh, stuff because then they they go elsewhere. Because getting two of them in here at once is going to be a bit yeah, that's going to be tricky. So let me go to the other uh, tub and. Uh, Your nose in there. Really piss you off. Yeah. Oh, shut up, you <laughs> thing. He's just up Who there. the hell asked you? Uh, look at him. He's just foul all the time. And we're not paying any attention to him. Well, that's the problem. Uh, yes, yes. He's like, you know, the black knight in, uh, in Monty Python. Come back here. I'll bite your leg off. <laughs> Such a conflagration, and nobody's doing anything to you. What is your problem? you up honestly we don't have to do anything are you upset that you didn't get enough food like slamming their faces onto something. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing that I can figure out is uh, we're just going to slam our faces because we love to do it. Come on. Come on. Slash down. <laughs> Must have caught that one taking a nap. That was way too easy. <laughs> I'll take it, anything I can get. Uh, yep. All right, so we're just going to change the substrate and do a little scraping and move on to the next. Uh, let's see if sugar has uh, calmed down. Hello, you're poised for takeoff, though. See, I didn't forget you. Come on. Come on. Whoa. No, slippery oh. snake. Oh. Come on. have to play hockey with me. I don't want to play hockey with you. Sorry folks, I got distracted. I was grabbing another hook just in case he needs it. Well, they do get down uh, wound just by simple, uh, simple things. I mean, I had them since they were babies, for Christ's sakes. You know, oh, six hi. toxic worms. <laughs> Hello. And you're the light one of the bunch. Yeah. Interesting, they both go straight to the top. And I go straight for the latches. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, they are uh, semi-arboreal, so one wouldn't think that by the amount of time that they spend on the ground, but uh, I hope they, they don't decide to uh, hang out and dry off. The whole idea is to get them uh, nice and wet for their uh, upcoming shedding. So that's the Elegant Pit Viper Protobothrops Elegans. It's quite a, uh, a pleomorphic uh, colored snake in patterns. Uh, uh, quite variable. Sort of like the Bush Vipers. Must be a uh, Protobothrops themed cleaning expedition today. Because the uh, Protobothrops Cornutus uh, are next. Hi gang. Alright, get your tail out of there. Are you absolutely sure there's nothing else on there? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that was definitely a female. Look at that. Huh. Yeah. Yes, I know I'm disturbing you. Are you going to go psycho, huh? Are you going to go psycho? They have this special psycho trick that they do. Uh, I'm not going to force it to do it by upsetting it, but they do have a psycho uh, mode that they go into. No! Oh, they are also escape artists. Well, all that stuff is on the ice blood, so I just sort of had to leave it open. Alright. There's only two in there? Uh, that's all. The other two are over here. Ah, okay. Hello. Whoa. I'm out of there. Uh, they get an upgrade hiding place. Uh, a T-Rex skull that uh, Mrs. Viper Keeper got uh, me for, uh, for Christmas. There you go. We had a good laugh imagining putting it in with one of the cobras and then having them get stuck in it as they try to go through. Of course, Mr. Viper Keeper wasn't laughing so hard since he'd have to go in and get it off. Ah, just missed the big yawn. That's his way of signaling, I'm expecting mice today. It's Sunday, dude. Which one? Uh, uh, red spot. He just stuck his head out of the uh -huh. uh, bin. All right, well, these guys uh, will have to uh, get used to their new colored substrate. The other one allowed them to blend in a little better, a little too much better, and mm. more difficult to see sometimes. So um, I hope they like this substrate. They were looking for something to eat, so maybe a little bit later after they get over this trauma, I'll offer them chicks when I offer chicks to the rest of the beasts. Okay, while some other things are going on in the room with animals, waiting for them to feed, etc., etc., uh, I am going to uh, install one of uh, these Belkin Wemo devices, which is a Wi Fi uh, controlled. Uh, uh, switch which will control the small room overhead lights uh, all the other lights for the cages and stuff are controlled by these also uh, which makes it convenient and I don't have to worry about uh, turning things on and off and neither does Mrs. Viper Keeper just happens so I gotta pull this apart and I will put these a plug cord and receptacle in place so I can plug the Wemo into it and then plug the light uh, into there so that's what the plan is and obviously because I can't have the lights on this has to be done during the day I happen to be off uh, work for a week so I get to do these extra special projects well I introduced Chubby my red uh, death adder, smooth death adder, from 
Papua New Guinea. I've had Chubby since he was born. Uh, came from my friend Eric. And Chubby uh, has been sort of a hanger queen. Uh, he just absolutely didn't want to leave his, uh, his uh, tub. You know, he's lived in a, uh, a tub all his entire life. And then I have the newborn of a couple years ago. Uh, the female, the red female, and uh, I, uh, you know, she's two, two and a half years old now, so I decided to put them in together, and it looks like Chubby is uh, either connected or is certainly working quite hard at connecting. Um, I'm just grateful that no one has tried to eat one another like this thing down here has tried to eat every male that I put in with her. She's evil. Um, so I guess I don't reproduce her because I'm not going to lose a male. Uh, so I'm going to just leave these guys uh, uh, squirming away and maybe by August we've got some It'll be a small brood, which is good. Some a small brood of uh, uh, death adders with unrelated bloodlines and some beautiful colors. Yeah, and I'm gonna put uh, uh, as soon as I clean that cage, I'm gonna put uh, um, uh, her father back in with her mother, and uh, uh, creamsicle will go back in there, and hopefully we'll have uh, some of those. Um, I really worry about breeding her. She's had two years off. I always give my animals a break uh, after a successful breeding um, because she was just so full of babies at 32 uh, babies last time. She was having a tough time uh, breathing by the time uh, birthing came along. Oh, he's doing happy death at her. I definitely think there's some action going on. Oh. Oh, happy death at her. <laughs> okay, well, at least they're not eating one another, at least uh, in some sense. Don't mind me. Go about your business. He's really happy. <laughs> Do you need a bigger hide, dear Mr. Boomslang? Huh? Look at that action. That's really something to watch.
Yeah, they're not locked up. He's doing his darndest to get her interested. Well, you know, doing this whole twitching, rubbing dance. It's just uh, fascinating to watch. Well, he it's a little early in the breeding season. Uh, usually about this time of year, I put them together, and usually the males uh, uh, go uh, bonkers like he is. Uh, however, you know, it all depends on females being receptive or not, and if she's not, uh, you know, he's not going to get anywhere. Well, it's not for lack of trying. Well, it's that's in every male uh, <laughs> organism on the planet. I mean, uh, that's the whole idea is to, you know, to breed. Pass on your genetic material. Well, dude, I'm rooting for you. You've got a very seductive dance going on there. She just may be too young yet. I, I don't know what the breeding age is, but, you know, I got to believe that two and a half for, you know, an animal that size-wise is, you know, getting close to full grown, I wouldn't expect them to get much more than you know, 24 inches or, you know, uh, you know, a tenth of a meter or so. All right, well, we'll leave you be and good luck to you.